this talk is about lifetime zero cost end to end modernization and automation uh, and that is provided by our software go paddle community edition that's what this talk is about okay next slide gayatri hi i'm kishore and i'm co-founder and cto of go paddle as uh, already introduced i've worked for over 30 years in industry developing mainly infrastructure software and automation on linux i'm right now technically leading a very motivated team to deliver and innovate the go paddle platform and all the related automation tools my key motivation at work uh, is the wide scope uh, for innovative products and tools in this space of automation and modernization for kubernetes clusters and i hope i'll be able to share that energy with you all today gayatri you can introduce yourself please Uh, yeah, sure, uh, Kishore. Uh, hi, all. My name is Gayatri. I'm a friend and developer in GoPaddle. Uh, also, I'm a tech blogger and I'm passionate about learning Kubernetes and the related uh, technologies and all. Uh, also, apart from this, I'm doing some uh, product evangelization across various mediums. Uh, that's all. Yeah, thank you, Gayatri. Okay. Move on to the next slide. Yeah, uh, let's talk of modernization. What does it take to modernize? modernize? And in modernization, we imply uh, moving to uh, a Kubernetes cluster-like platform. There are three distinct stages. The environment on which all this happens, the applications that need to run on it, and the automation involved in all these things. The environment is, of course, as we all know, a Kubernetes cluster. So you need to provision Kubernetes clusters. You need to then monitor those uh, clusters uh, because you have to know what nodes are up and then how are they performing uh, and what is their high availability settings uh, and so on. They also need to be set up for horizontal auto scaling so that nodes can come in and go out based on uh, dynamic workloads and demands. Firewall, a very important piece because you want to properly set up all the uh, network rules and uh, you need all the uh, load balancers to be set up to ensure um, that uh, there is uh, application load balancing and uh, network load balancing and all the ingress rules are set up, right? This is all the environment on which it has to run. But in terms of uh, the application, the application itself, which is running on a standalone system, either on a server, on a VM, has to undergo an architectural transformation here. It has to be containerized and then resulting in a Docker file. And it has to be templatized, the deployment. So you need the corresponding YAML files and the Helm charts. In terms of the automation itself, once uh, you move there, you have to ensure that your uh, image is scanned for vulnerability. There is logging for all the uh, actions taken and all the events that occurred for the events they should be capable to give you alerts maybe through pager duty slack right and then uh, you need to be able to monitor the application right how is the app performing uh, and also monitor things like storage clusters and the infrastructure as well uh, and you need to have pipeline integration so that you can uh, do your uh, continuous integration and deployment isn't it so we'll drill down a little into the application because that's what is being moved from a standalone kind of system, a non-modernized system to a modernized system. So I'll drill down a little into the application. Okay, that's the next slide, please. All right, an application, of course, starts with the code. The code consists of its source code, of course. So if you have a Node.js app, it has its source code. And then for it to build, you need a base image, maybe a Ubuntu system, Ubuntu OS, and then you need Node.js Node version 8, maybe, and it, all its utilities, right? You need lots of utilities to be able to build in that environment. You need related libraries it uses, and uh, in the case of Java, it will be Java libraries, and app artifacts, in the case of Java, jar files, and so on, right? Those are the app artifacts. Along with this, what is needed is that every application that you've configured and runs 
has its capacity, right? How much of CPU, how much of memory does it require to really run reliably? And security related to what is its username, password, what is its user ID, group ID, all these access controls, security to access the app itself, right? Health checks to detect is the application alive, very important part. Storage, enough storage configured and monitored to ensure the application can run efficiently. Uh, and various configuration related to things like your environment. For instance, if it's a Golang, you have to have uh, a Go root properly set up. If it's uh, uh, various uh, things you're executing, the path variables have to be set up. So a huge number of things you have to set up, isn't it? And network, you have to have proper forwarding of ports and your ingress rules have to be set up. So all these constitute the aspects of organization. All right, next slide, Gayatri. Gayatri, if you can uh, mute your uh, audio. Yeah, one yeah. second. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Gayatri. All right. So I explained to you the modernization, uh, what is involved in modernization, what is involved in now do modernizing an application. This is where our platform Go Paddle comes in. It is the simplest, fastest, and cheapest way to modernize and uh, maintain cloud native applications. It's a no code platform. It does the automation and the modernization effectively. It's a multi-cloud solution. It uh, provisions on AWS, EKS, or Google GKE, or Azure AKS from a single console, from a single dashboard. It's out of the box automation. It has all the end-to-end -end DevOps capabilities. It does all the scaffolding, auto-generates all your artifacts in Kubernetes, Docker files, YAML files, Helm charts. It does all the logging, monitoring, alerting. Uh, it has all the enablers for your CI, CD, and the vulnerability scans. It supports all types of Linux workloads. It has over 30 tool integrations. Grafana for monitoring and so many others, which uh, we can show you. And uh, uh, there are uh, 30 plus ready built application templates. So you want templates, for instance, maybe MongoDB template that can readily run on the Kubernetes cluster so that you can integrate with that in your app. So we have over 30 plus ready built tested application templates. This is what GoPaddle provides. Next slide, Gayatri. So we talked about app modernization previously, right? Now we are talking in Go Paddle, we want to automate the entire app modernization. So take, for example, a, a, a simple Node.js app like Tic-Tac-Toe. Uh, in, in Gayatri's talk, she will show you an actual demo of all these steps that I'm explaining now. So you can literally trace what I say here through the steps uh, that she will show in her demo, okay. So you start from the source code. You start from the source code, Go Paddle goes and analyzes the project. In this case, it analyzes the project to understand what kind of language it is. And then it suggests to you, it goes and does a discovery first to find out what is the base operating system, is it Ubuntu? And then based on analysis of the project, it's a Node.js, it picks the Node.js uh, image. And, and then it finds the best fit image and creates a container profile. Create container profile involves all the things I said earlier related to what is your environment? What is your security in terms of username, password, group ID, user ID, all these things you capture. And along with this, you have to also capture details about what is your resource requirement? What is the amount of memory you need? What is the amount of uh, disk space you need? What is the amount of uh, CPUs you need? So all these are captured container profile is created. Using this, we go ahead and do the build on a Kubernetes environment. A build results in an actual build of the Docker image for your source code using all your uh, build parameters and build tools, which we all have captured and uh, also applied the container profile. Once constructed, we push to a Docker registry. We support public, private, uh, on-prem, SaaS, everything, okay? and once you, you've done this, you create a service group in Kubernetes and we add it to a temp, a create a deployment template 
and then add it to our existing template. Uh, so once you have the template ready, you can go deploy to Kubernetes or you can just generate Helm chart, which can then be downloaded and, and uh, uh, activated and deployed anywhere, okay? So this entire modernization happens through a, uh, a few clicks uh, if you choose or by single command line if you choose. So we hope to show you all that, okay? Next slide, please. So this talk is about Go Paddle Lite. What I covered previously is what Go Paddle uh, does. Go Paddle has a community light edition, which we are very happy to announce in this conference and then make it available to everybody. It's a community edition of Go Paddle. We already we also have our on-prem or enterprise version. We also have a SaaS version, uh, which has a lot many more features. Uh, this community edition is self-hosted. It's lifetime free. It's for developers, startups, learners, and for all kinds of evaluation you want to do. It is available as an add-on to microcades. As you know, in microcades, uh, you have an add-on that you can enable and disable, and it's that mechanism we have used, and uh, we will show you all that. Uh, it runs on desktops, VMs, and host machines, simple to install and use, which again, we will show. It, it currently is supported on uh, GitHub uh, with the token-based authentication. It could be managed and self-hosted too. Uh, in in uh, coming releases, we will be also supporting uh, single sign-on and then on GitHub, we'll also be supporting for GitLab and Bitbucket. Builds, unlimited builds. You can do as many builds as you want. Docker registries, it supports private, public, uh, like uh, Harbor. It does not have currently multi-cloud and multi-user capabilities uh, in this version. And all these capabilities are available in our enterprise versions um, and also in our SaaS versions. This is a light edition. It is expected to be run on a standalone uh, uh, Kubernetes in a box, isn't it? It's for end-to-end -end DevOps experience uh, uh, with production grade uh, quality uh, on a single box. So on your laptop, you can have a complete automation uh, and modernization on microcades. So therefore, it's on the local one. Hence, there's no multi-cloud and multi-user uh, in this uh, light edition, that is all. But it is available through our enterprise as well as SaaS editions. Uh, and it has all the monitoring and logging, uh, continuous integration, alerts and notifications, most of which we'll be able to show you, okay? Uh, so uh, in summary, what I can say is Go Paddle Lite is going to dramatically increase uh, productivity through your entire life cycle. So the increase of productivity productivity through your life cycle is the key value of Go Paddle Lite. And uh, uh, we'll go to the next slides to experience it. Next slide, Gayatri. All right, I'll hand it over to Gayatri, who will take you through uh, the installation of this Go Paddle Lite and then uh, show you a demo. Thank you all. Over to you, Gayatri. Thank you, Kishore. Um, yeah, guys, uh, so far, uh, Kishore has uh, like, talked about uh, how the uh, various uh, problems or hurdles faced by the uh, developers during the onboarding process. And uh, finally, he uh, spoke about how the Go Paddle resolved those uh, problems. Now I'm going to show you the demo of uh, the Go Paddle Lite Edition. For that, you have to do is to uh, install the light, uh, like install the micro creators on your environment and, uh, and you have to execute uh, these two commands. Uh, in also, uh, it is flexible for all, all the environments. Uh, already uh, Kishore mentions, no, uh, you can install the this on your local desktop or maybe VM or any host uh, as well. Uh, so uh, for enabling the GoPaddle Lite edition, uh, you can see uh, you have to provide the hyphen V and hyphen uh, V option. Uh, this is uh, both the I and V are the optional, um, uh, optional params. Uh, here hyphen i indicates that uh, the static ip address of the 
uh, install like a uh, static IP address of the uh, instance. Uh, for example, suppose you are going to install this uh, light addition into your uh, AWS instance means uh, here you have to provide the uh, public IP address of the uh, AWS instance. Then uh, suppose uh, you are not going to provide, suppose you haven't provided this hyphen I option means it will automatically take the, uh, take your internal IP address of your uh, VM or machine. Uh, suppose um, you wish to install this GoPad light edition on your local machine. Uh, that time you are not providing this hyphen I option means it will automatically pick the local host as the uh, static IP address. And the hyphen B option is the um, version of the GoPedal light edition. Suppose you haven't provided the value, it will take the uh, latest version of the GoPedal light uh, edition. Uh, here also one more thing you have to note, uh, like you haven't provided this hyphen I option means uh, it will uh, like you can't able to do the CICD kind of stuff. After like after installing the uh, after enabling this GoPedal light uh, add on, uh, you will get the access endpoints uh, like this. Uh, for our uh, demo purpose, already I have uh, brought up one uh, light edition in my machine. Uh, here you can see the access endpoint of that. Uh, for just copy and paste it over on your uh, browser. Once you uh, like open this on your browser, uh, initially it will uh, land you to the land you through the uh, like license agreement page. Uh, in that uh, uh, in that license agreement page, you have to uh, provide your email address and you have to agree the license agreement. And once you are uh, agreed the license agreement, you will get the uh, default uh, password for your uh, this light edition. Uh, for my case, I already uh, I have done the license agreement and here you can see my um, a default uh, password. Once you logged in uh, to the uh, logged into the light edition, you will land into uh, the dashboard of the uh, light environment. Here uh, you can see various uh, activities, logs, and metrics uh, like uh, L, uh, like uh, uh, all the uh, activities uh, you are done uh, through the uh, platform. Uh, first, first of all, this is the, the build trends. Uh, this will show you the uh, past one weeks uh, uh, like succeeded and failed build information. And the second, uh, the next graph is the security trends graph. Uh, this will show you the um, like vulnerabilities uh, which are uh, discovered through uh, which are uh, discovered from your docker image uh, during the build phase also it is categorized in various uh, you know it is categorized under various uh, uh, criteria then uh, you can see here you can see the recent builds and here you can see all the uh, average build duration then coming to the alerts and events uh, section here it will show all the application and the cluster related uh, events. If suppose you click on the more option, it will show the uh, complete uh, events uh, of the of your um, running applications. Here you can see uh, some of the metrics logs. So uh, like the main advantage of uh, this uh, event uh, like event metrics is suppose any of your services goes down and or uh, you have uh, like um, suppose uh, any of the service goes down means here you can easily capture and you can easily find out which service goes down and uh, uh, which appli which uh, application is causing the problem and all. Uh, then and already I man mentioned about the license agreement part, right? In that, uh, like once you agreed the license, uh, as soon as uh, like the it uh, it, uh, it will uh, like register your local environment into the uh, uh, GoPedal Light Edition. Here is the uh, my local environment, and here you can see uh, some of the add-ons like Prometheus, Prometheus Event Exporters, and the Grafana. Uh, so this is the this is installed as part of the cluster registration. Then uh, during the uh, 
like while talking kishore uh, she uh, he explains uh, about the pre built uh, available templates no uh, you can uh, get all the available pre built templates uh, from here and you can use uh, those templates for your uh, deployment uh, deployments uh, but suppose in case if you want to onboard your your own application like your own uh, microservices application into kubernetes means uh, maybe you can use this uh, quick start wizard option um, with that you can onboard your uh, source code uh, based application uh, from scratch without writing any uh, docker or yaml files yeah and then for that you have to feed all these uh, steps only uh, like first step you, you can see the api token uh, information uh, this is the personal uh, access token of the go pedal light edition you can um, this is used during the uh, initialization process you can uh, use the uh, default option itself then the next step is the cluster info uh, here uh, this cluster is used for building and uh, deploying your uh, source code application into the uh, kubernetes and the next step is the docker registry uh, here you can um, the docker uh, registry is used for uh, like pushing your image and pulling the image uh, back for back to the uh, deployment phase for that you just need to register your docker hub registry into the um, go paddle light platform and the next step is the allocation policy allocation policy means uh, like uh, how much capacity you requires uh, for building and deploying your uh, source code based project uh, you can uh, set the uh, these uh, like cpu and memory request and limits uh, based on your uh, source code project and the next step is the source code uh, option uh, some like your uh, project is maintaining under uh, github repository means you have to um, register your github account in the uh, go paddle light edition suppose your projects are maintained and as a uh, public repo means you just need to use this uh, public uh, source code account option and go ahead uh, with the next rest of the step uh, but suppose in case your application is maintained by the maintained under uh, as a private repo you just uh, need to uh, register your github account into uh, the light edition uh, for that you just need to generate one personal github uh, personal access token and uh, with that through that you, you can able to register here uh, also apart from this github uh, gopaddle is supporting uh, both bitbucket and gitlab kind of uh, sign on a uh, single sign on uh, way of registration as well uh, but as of now uh, in this particular version uh, the github only uh, we are provided i'm using the public option and the next is the rep repository session uh, the repository uh, part you have to provide the clone url of your uh, source code project for mine i'm taking this application once you provided the clone url then you have to specify the branch information then next one is the uh, project type um, here you can right now you can see the node.js and java applications uh, but the go paddle light or go paddle edition is not restricted to uh, this these two languages you can onboard any any kind of uh, linux workloads uh, like uh, python golang or even uh, .net core kind of application and all uh, you can onboard it uh, through uh, the um, you know the light edition go paddle light edition uh, then third is the base image uh, this base image is used for uh, building and uh, like uh, deploying your uh, application then uh, third is the build on commit option uh, build on commit means uh, ci cd uh, option uh, so in case you enables this option uh, as soon as uh, you are doing some new code commits and new uh, code changes and once you pushed into your uh, docker uh, like github repository it automatically build your uh, source code project and generate as a um, like a docker image uh, but one restriction here is uh, if you are chosen like uh, earlier in the source code option 
I have used the public repository. Uh, it, it is not available for public repository. If you chosen the private, it will be uh, available. Then next option is the uh, vulnerability scan option. Uh, this will uh, like it, this will tell you the vulner. This will list you the vulnerabilities which are uh, discovered uh, in in your uh, like a Docker image during the build phase. Then next option is the override environment variables. Uh, if you enable this option, if is there any conflict between uh, the base image which you provided and with the with your environment means, uh, it will override uh, the ENVs. Uh, with the uh, your environments uh, environment env uh, variables and then the application start duration uh, the application start duration uh, uh, like is the uh, total time taken for uh, uh, like running your uh, source code uh, project the yeah. next step is uh, yeah a yeah, uh, quick time check probably uh be winding up in maybe some five minutes okay yeah yeah uh, like next is the environment variable section uh, here you can uh, suppose your source code project has any uh, database or uh, any uh, like database username or password kind of uh, uh, like uh, dependency is that then you can add the yeah, environment variables as uh, here if there is no external envis, you can skip that part. Then second one is the, then uh, the next step is the uh, scripts part. Uh, here you can provide all the uh, like uh, script which are used for building and running your source code application. The build script indicates the how to build your uh, source code project and the start script indicates how to uh, run your uh, source code project and health check uh, script indicates uh, uh, health check script is used for validating whether your services are uh, running or not then stop script is uh, used for like all the discoveries are done and then uh, this script is used to um, like stop your uh, process like this uh, then one more thing you have to know uh, like uh, uh, this uh, scripts are just sample scripts only according to your uh, project like based on your uh, source code project it will uh, change then once you are done uh, like once you are uh, include uh, added your uh, source uh, like scripts then you have to download the script Yeah, uh, after that, you have to provide the exact path of the uh, scripts file. Then uh, once everything is done, uh, you just need to copy uh, this whole script into your uh, machine. Uh, it will like uh, uh, mission. It will uh, do the onboarding process. But before that, you have to make sure uh, you already installed Docker in your machine and make sure it is up and running. Uh, like for the time constraint, I have uh, recorded this uh, uh, part in uh, uh, a part as video. Uh, so I'll quickly show you the. So now you can see once I uh, pasted the um, like command into my uh, terminal, it will uh, automatically clone your source code project and it will initiate the GPCTL. GPCTL is the command line utility for uh, GoPaddle platform. Then after that, it will analyze the project and detect the um, like a project type. Here, uh, the project type is the Vue.js uh, Vue and it will show you the conflicted environment variables and all. Uh, like a, both uh, like path and node version is conflicted here. And also it will show you the uh, like command and entry point information as well. After that, it will execute your uh, uh, like a start uh, execute your uh, microservices and after that it will uh, start the uh, containerization uh, process.
as part of the containerization process it will generate all the uh, like uh, containers uh, deployment templates and all um, now you can see it is uh, creating the uh, like uh, container repository distribution information and all now the build is got triggered uh, so it will uh, take few minutes and after it will deploy your uh, source code application Then uh, you can see uh, here the application uh, launch is initiated and I will uh, quickly show you the uh, like up after uh, the application dashboard as well. I already onboarded a uh, couple uh, through quick start wizard. Uh, Tic Tac view is the one of that application. Uh, here you can see uh, you can access this application using this your endpoint. Obviously, I'm using AWS instance, so I'm taking the for accessing it outside. I'm taking the uh, public IP address. So here you can see uh, the application uh, is accessible outside, and uh, this is the uh, service dashboard. Here it will list all the uh, services. Once you clicked on the service, it will uh, show you the detailed information about your uh, services. Here it, uh, you can uh, get all the uh, CPU and memory which are uh, used by uh, this particular uh, service. And similarly, you can see the CPU usage and memory usage uh, graph as well. Then uh, under replicas uh, section, uh, you can see the various, uh, you, uh, it will list all the replicas. And once you clicked on the replicas, it will uh, land you to the uh, replicas dashboard. And this is the container uh, list. Once you click on the container, it will show you the detailed content, container information. Also, uh, like in, in case any um, errors or any failures happens, uh, you can easily, uh, you know, debug from this platform itself. So for that, the terminal option is available. Uh, you can access this particular container uh, uh, through this terminal. Also, uh, the, uh, the GoPedal Lite environment uh, provides uh, various uh, container and replica and all kind of uh, logging and all logging strategies as well. Then uh, quickly, I'll show you, uh, I will uh, show you the build dashboard as well. Here is the build dashboard. Here you can see uh, the vulnerabilities uh, information and all. Then once you click on the build page, uh, here it will show the detailed view of the vulnerability information and the source code uh, project information. Um, then here you can see all the, uh, like which build environment is used and uh, the build is happened uh, scheduled on which node and how much uh, request and uh, CPU limit is used for building this particular container and all. Then uh, here is the complete uh, build log. Uh, like suppose in case you, you have any issue with the build, uh, it will uh, here itself you can uh, easily figure out and you can debug your uh, container build and all. Then uh, this is the vulnerability log. Here you can uh, see the detailed vulnerability uh, information. Also, uh, like as part of the uh, like uh, template generation, uh, you can uh, generate your um, like uh, your source code project as uh, Helm chart as well. But right now uh, the light doesn't have the uh, doesn't have the support. Uh, but the light, uh, like SaaS or on-premise version of GoPedal has uh, this support as well. Then here uh, you can see like once uh, like all the um, uh, the content uh, like once it ends, it will show you the access URL uh, of the uh, uh, project. Uh, this you can directly uh, use this URL to access your project outside without going um, and visiting the uh, UI also. Then suppose if you want to uh, delete the resources which are created as part of the initial uh, like uh, this pro initialization process, you can this uh, use this command and clean up those uh, resources. And yeah, finally, you can. Um, 
access or you can uh, try this uh, out of box devops tool uh, that is go paddle light uh, in your machine uh, like you can use this github repository for that uh, suppose you have any queries uh, rela related to the uh, like uh, uh, like go paddle light you can uh, reach you out through the through our slack channels as well yep thank you thank you all thanks